Hello, library friends! Welcome to the final week, week seven of Art Adventures, brought to you by the Lynchburg Public Library. I am Miss Victoria, and I am super excited to share another awesome art project with you as part of our online summer reading program. Each Art Adventures video starts with a brief introduction to a famous artist and the techniques they used to create their masterpieces. We look at some examples of their work before getting started making some of our very own. The artist we are learning from today is Jackson Pollock, who was born in Cody, Wyoming in 1912. His family later moved to LA. When Pollock was in high school, he was kicked out for fighting and being rebellious, but his art teacher, who recognized his talent, convinced the school to let him come back. It wasn't until the late 1940s in New York, however, that Pollock's art first became famous, and it caused quite a stir in the art world. Some people loved it and considered Pollock one of the most original artists of the entire century. Other people did not love it, however. One art critic from the New York Times compared Pollock's art to a plate of baked macaroni. Pollock was an abstract expressionist artist, which means that he expressed his feelings or emotions by making abstract art, art that has no recognizable images. Pollock worked in his barn, laying large canvases down onto the floor, and then dripping, splattering, and pouring gloss enamel and house paint onto them. Pollock moved around his paintings as he worked, bending and twisting as he applied the paint. He said that by moving around the four sides of his canvas, he could be in the painting. His method became known as drip painting, or action painting. Sometimes he even walked across the canvas or made handprints in the wet paint. Pollock described his paintings as being energy and motion made visible. As you look at Pollock's paintings, you can see his feelings there. Bursts of color, tangled webs of paint, bold splotches, all things that show whether he was feeling excited, angry, anxious, calm, etc. Here are some examples of Pollock's artwork. The one we will be playing around with today is number 17. You may have noticed that many of Pollock's paintings are titled with a number, and that is because numbers are neutral, and they do not influence a viewer's interpretation of a painting when they look at it. This book that the library owns is called Action Jackson, and it was written by Jan Greenberg and Sandra Jordan and illustrated by Robert Andrew Parker, and it tells the story of Pollock creating one of his drip paintings. Number one, 1950, Lavender Mist. And it shows us Pollock choosing his paints and then circling his canvas. The book describes him as an athlete, a dancer, as he twists and turns and leaps around to make long lines of paint. And sometimes, as this book also shows us, something would land in the wet paint, like a nail or an insect or a penny from his pocket and he would leave those things there to become part of the painting. And here we see him making handprints in the wet paint. Here is the finished painting. As the book says, people's reactions to it at the time varied. Some were angry, some were confused, some were excited and joyful, but everyone could agree that Pollock was painting in an original way that had never been seen before. This is a really neat book about Pollock and his artistic process, and I recommend checking it out sometime. Now it is time to make our abstract expressionist art. Here is what you will need if you want to make yours the same way I'm making mine. Remember, there is no right or wrong in art, so feel free to do things your own way. You will need paint in various colors. You can use acrylic paint 
or tempera paint, otherwise known as poster paint. If you are using acrylic paint, you may want to water it down a bit before using it so that it will splatter more easily. You will also need a large sheet of paper or a sheet of canvas from a canvas pad. I will be using the canvas because it is what I happen to have and because it will be closest to how Pollock made his art. Paper will work just fine though. You will also need a paintbrush. You can use just one of whatever size you have, or you can try using brushes of different sizes. A bigger brush, like this one, will hold more paint, so it will splatter more paint all at once than a smaller one will. You can also use sticks or the end of your paintbrush. Try mixing it up if you can. You can even use a turkey baster if your family has a spare one you can have. You won't want to use it for food afterwards. You will also need cups, bowls, or a palette to hold your paints. I will be using this palette that I have. It has nice deep wells to hold my paint. And water and paper towels are also a must. You'll need to rinse your brush and be able to dry your brush and wipe off yourself if you get messy. And speaking of which, you will also need a painter's smock or play clothes that you won't mind getting paint on. This project is messy. And you will need an outdoor space that you are allowed to use. If you will be on a surface other than grass, make sure to put down newspapers or some sort of tarp so you don't get paint on your porch, sidewalk, etc. Hello again. I will be working indoors today after all. I have a spread cloth here and I'm wearing my painter's clothes. I have all my supplies ready. So first up, we just need to shake our paints and pour them into the palette. I decided to start with a yellow paint since it was such a sunny day. When choosing your colors, you could decide that red means you are feeling bold, and blue means you are feeling calm, and green could mean you are full of energy, or you could make up your own meanings. Don't forget to move all around your canvas as you work. And now my artwork is complete. I made a large abstract expressionist painting that shows how I am feeling. What feelings did you paint? If you get inspired by Jackson Pollock too, I'd love to see how your artwork turned out. You can send pictures to us at the Lynchburg Public Library via Facebook Messenger. Thank you so much for joining this week's Art Adventures program. I hope you have enjoyed making masterpieces with me. Even though our virtual summer reading program is almost over, there is still something fun happening every day. You can view our previous videos here on YouTube at any time, and you can check our website or Facebook page for current event details and or announcements. There is still a little time to register on Read Squared, so you can earn cool virtual badges and chances to win prizes, including a grand prize. Thanks for joining in!